Hi guys, so Dubbed here and today I'm doing a video review on the Google Pixel 5. Now I've been using it for two weeks. <laughs> okay, now that's not my line, but for those people who are aware, two weeks ago I pretty much had the only video live of the Google Pixel 5 and you guys watched it 800,000 times. For a channel of my size that's insane, but what really got me is the really lovely comments you guys left me throughout social media, on the videos. Honestly, I've been doing this for 13 years and it actually kind of brings tears to my eyes. But anyway, thank you so much for all the love. Now, um, if you're interested in certain elements of the Pixel 5, it's video timestamps throughout this review. I know it's gonna be a long review. There's also dedicated video reviews of the Google Pixel 5 in certain elements. So for example, the speaker, I've, I've made a separate review for that. So do check that down. It'll be down in the description below. Also down there, you'll find buy links and alternatives that you might want to consider and some of the phones that I've been comparing this to. And shout out to Vodafone for hooking me up with all these phones. Uh, you guys are legends. You know who you guys are. Thank you so much for that. Now, before jumping into it, if you do have Instagram, I'd very much appreciate a follow. It's at totally dubbed. And if you're interested in all electric or hybrid vehicles, do check out Totally EV. Your support would be greatly appreciated. So without further ado, let's get into this review. So let's first start off and talk about the build quality and design of the Pixel 5, which in my opinion is among the best feeling and made phones out there on the market. Now, first off, it's got an aluminium slash plastic type of material, which not only feels nice in comparison to say smoother devices like the Pixel 4a or let's say the 4XL um, and other devices such as uh, the Samsung uh, phones that you can see out there on the market, but it also means that it has wireless charging capabilities and also reverse charging due to a clever design that Google have managed. It means that it can also do that. Now, what I will say about this material is that it's not as prone as breaking as let's say a glass based device. And yes, this is a Note 20 Ultra 5G, which somehow accidentally broke in my bag uh, because well, it's got a glass back. It's the first time I've ever broken a smartphone in my life and of all phones to break, I didn't expect a 1000 pound plus phone to break. But anyway, what I'm trying to say over here with the Pixel 5 is the fact that you won't have to worry about that if you were to drop it. Now, I haven't done any drop tests or anything, but I would presume that this will last a lot longer at least in terms of its exterior aesthetics in comparison to a phone that has a glass back. Now on the subject of the back design of the phone you can see it's got a small protruding camera. It's nowhere near in comparison to some of the Samsung devices which you can see over here and it's actually a little bit less um, um, out protruding in comparison to let's say the 4XL. What this means is that when you place the phone flat on a um, solid surface it's not going to rock as much. There is a slight amount of rock if you were to tap it at the top left hand side but other than that you're not going to have the phone constantly rocking left and right in comparison to these Samsung devices which is, is a nice sign. Also you will see that this phone very much inherits a rear fingerprint sensor like the Pixel 4a and therefore means that it's a great way of accessing your smartphone actually ridiculously quickly. Now in comparison to a lot of phones over here which have in display fingerprint sensors I much prefer a physical sensor. Of course you your mileage may vary in terms of that. I would have liked if it was slightly more indented, but if you add a case, then that will be a little bit, uh, well, less accidentally prone to being activated. On the flip side, it means that there is no um, face unlock, which was present on the 4XL, and that's not present on the 5. I find that quite strange because for people who want to access the phone without actually accessing the rear of the phone, like let's say it's placed on a desk, then you can't do that. You have to access a pin or something or a password uh, versus using your face unlock. I just find it very strange why Google got rid of that feature when they could have very much left it in because it's got a front-facing camera. Now, speaking of the front-facing camera, it's a hole punch design, top left hand side, nothing much to note over here other than the fact that it's um, a location. Now as we're at the front of the phone here, this is one thing I think should be pointed out because a lot of people were commenting about of it because it's got symmetri symmetrical bezels and that's because of the fact that one, it doesn't have a lower chin and secondly at the top there's no physical um, speaker that's placed at the top of the phone, instead it's in the display and we're going to talk about that in just a bit in terms of sound quality. But this means in a Aesthetically, it looks absolutely fantastic and having used it for two weeks, I must say, I really do like what uh, Google have achieved over here. There's very few Android devices that do this and there's a lot of iPhone devices that do it. So I'm, I'm 
pleased to say that this is a great Android smartphone that has symmetrical bezels, at least on the front of the uh, of the phone. Now, before moving on, I just want to mention the physical buttons. There's a power uh, button at the top, uh, volume rocker underneath. I know some people prefer it the other way around, but I'm actually quite a fan of that. There's no 3.5 millimeter jack, which is honestly very disappointing given the fact that the Pixel 4a actually has it, even the 4a 5G. Uh, and furthermore, there's no actual 3.5 millimeter jack to USB-C adapter in the box, which I found pretty surprising. There's a USB Type-C uh, port underneath, um, and also there is a SIM slot. Now the SIM slot itself reveals a singular physical SIM, but you can have dual SIM capabilities if you have an eSIM. So it's something I made kind of like a mistake pre uh, previously in my hands-on. So it doesn't have two physical SIMs, and neither does it have a, a micro SD expansion slot, such as let's say some of the Samsung devices. So worth bearing that in mind and something that you should just consider. Speaking about SIMs, and no, I'm not talking about the game, here the Pixel 5 has 5G connectivity and therefore you'll be able to see on your screen offers absolutely blistering speeds. Now I tested this at the middle of Wimbledon and when I did test it initially on my hands-on a video I tested it in a not a great uh, location and therefore actually the phone was limited to LTE c c connectivity but even then the smartphone performed extraordinarily well and I must say in terms of, of raw performance, in terms of that speed um, that you get over 5G in comparison to 4G, it's absolutely ideal. And finally, I should mention in terms of the phone, it's got IPX8 rating, uh, not IP68. So in other words, it's a waterproof, uh, so you can dunk it in water. So in other words, if you were to accidentally drop this down the toilet for some reason, then you can rest assured that the phone isn't going to be KIA when you take it out. Now moving on, we've got the display. Now the Pixel 5 has a 6-inch OLED display with all also 90 Hertz. Now you can disable the 90 Hertz toggle and indeed you can also force it to run at 90 Hertz all the time. I don't know why you'd want to do that but if you want to do that you can do that via dev options or the smooth display toggle via 60 and 90 Hertz is via the dis uh, display settings. What I will say is that the 90 Hertz provides that extra bit of fluidity and is very much appreciated. And I'll get into battery life and how this affects battery life in just a bit. But what I will say is that it's nice to see that 90 Hertz is included on the Pixel 5 in comparison to, let's say, the Pixel 4a 5G, which doesn't have 90 Hertz, it's limited to 60 Hertz. Now, in terms of the display itself, um, I must say I was very impressed with the overall color accuracy and the color tones. They are a little less saturated and a little less popping in terms of vibrant, uh, see, in comparison to the Super AMOLED screen found on my S10 Plus or in comparison to some of the more flagship uh, Samsung devices but it's very much um, agreeable to my eyes and I had no issues whatsoever. In terms of brightness, it gets up to 670 nits in total brightness. That's with adaptive brightness enabled. And if you were to disable adaptive brightness and put it to 100% brightness, you get 480 nits with a minimum of two nits. So in other words, it's got a good scale. It's bright enough in most scenarios. You'll be able to see that even in bright sunlight scenarios, you can see your phone although it's not as bright as other phones out there in comparison to what my one-year-old plus Samsung Galaxy S10, it's definitely not as bright. And in comparison to more flagship Samsung phones, which I showed you previously, it's definitely not as bright as those either. And now let's talk about actual speaker quality. Now, as I mentioned before, this has got an in-display speaker. I'll get into a lot more detail in my dedicated audio review of the Pixel 5, so do check that down below. But for a little snippet, what I'm going to do is play back my Audi e-tron review on Totally EV on both the Pixel 4 XL which has a physical uh, speaker and the Pixel 5. So let me just go quiet now and you guys can listen. SUV market has really blown up as of late and here we've got one of the premium all-electric SUVs and this is the Audi e-tron. It starts from £60,000 has really blown up as of late and here we've got one of the premium all-electric SUVs and this is the Audi e-tron it starts from £60,000 and this example that we now this small little audio demo should give you an indication of how the stereo functionality works there is a bottom speaker over here and there's one also uh, built into the display as I've mentioned what I will say is that the overall sound uh, from the speakers themselves is pretty lackluster and I'm somewhat disappointed because the fact that they've taken away the physical uh, speaker such as the one that you find on the 4a is well just not as good the in display um, speaker just sounds well not as well engaging so therefore if you watch a lot of stuff on your smartphone I think you'll find that the pixel 5 is not great in terms of that um, function in terms of call quality there's no issues whatsoever it is a little less faint over the uh, if you're taking a, a phone call in comparison to let 
let's say my S10 Plus, which has again a front-facing speaker grill, then the uh, the Pixel 5 will just sound a little bit more subdued, and therefore if you're hard of hearing, uh, you'll find it a little bit harder to hear your recipient on your Pixel 5 in comparison to say its competitors. Is it acceptable? Yes. Is it something that I think is a fundamental flaw? No, but if you're someone who watches a lot of content, as I mentioned, then you'll find yourself just a little bit disappointed, especially in comparison to cheaper alternatives, let's say the Pixel 4a, which far outperform its speaker quality just due to the fact that it's got two physical speakers rather than one physical speaker that's built into the display. And now we get onto performance. Now the Google Pixel 5 houses the Snapdragon 765G processor, which is a mid-tier processor, let's be honest. But how does that actually come across in day-to-day usage. Having used this phone pretty much as a daily driver for two weeks, I can safely say I didn't notice any sort of lag or any sort of difference in terms of using my Galaxy S10 Plus, which is using the Exynos 9820. Now, in synthetic benchmarks, yes, it will come out lower. It's not as low as, let's say, the 730G uh, that's uh, in, in the uh, Pixel 4a, but in comparison to other devices out there, yes, it's definitely lackluster in terms of benchmarks. But benchmarks are only one thing. They're synthetic benchmarks for a reason and of course they try and test some real life usage but it's only when you come to actually using a phone where you can actually feel is there some sort of sluggishness to it. Now the Pixel 3a which is I remember I used quite a while ago did have some sort of sluggish behavior and specifically when coming to using Pokemon Go which is a, a, a game I play pretty much um, almost every day I found that it was a little bit lackluster in terms of launching the app and even just using it um, and it felt that sometimes it was jittering and lagging. Uh, on the whole it was okay but you know it was a budget device for a reason. The Pixel 5 however didn't have any of those issues and it really left me pretty content by be, be it using it on a daily driver or furthermore actually gaming. So I played some PUBG on it, I played some Asphalt 9 uh, Legends which you'll be able to see on your screen and uh, ultimately I had no issues whatsoever and be it running at 60 hertz or 90 hertz obviously the fluidity I did quite like the 90 hertz uh, specifically on like Asphalt 9 so here is that something I would say that this phone just really does perform extremely well. Now in comparison to let's say Samsung devices, let's say my S10 Plus or even let's say the S, uh, S20 Ultra, these phones have got better chipsets inside but unfortunately they're filled with a lot of bloatware, something that's come up literally since the inception of Samsung smartphones. It's actually what kind of made my name on YouTube because I was rooting and creating Android kernel guides and things like that for the Galaxy S1. So Galaxy S1 is, is ages old as you can see where we are right now. But what I'm trying to say over here is for years Samsung have always integrated bloatware and a lot of other manufacturers also integrate their own bloatware type of apps or you know have these kind of limitations. The Google device is really a pure Android experience and as a result when it comes to actually using on a daily basis you'll completely forget what chipsets inside because ultimately your real world uh, usage and experience is what really comes across and the Google Pixel 5 it is extremely great and I would say among the best Pixel devices ever made in this respect. Now next up is battery life and here the Google Pixel 5 is extremely impressive. Now it's 4080 milliamp battery is one of the largest that's ever been in a Google Pixel device and it came through in my controlled benchmark which I play back a video file and set all uh, smartphones to a set brightness and here you can see the Google Pixel 5 had 21 hours of playback time, which is pretty insane given the fact that the phone has got a smaller battery pack in comparison to, let's say, some of the Samsung alternatives. In this respect, the Google Pixel 5 is extremely impressive. These are all synthetic benchmarks, but what about in terms of real world usage? Well, I've been using the phone for two weeks, and uh, not one point did I feel to myself, oh, I need to reach for a charger. It was actually completely the opposite. It was more the fact that because I was testing the phone, I was like, well, I don't want to plug it into charge right now because I want to see how long it will last and therefore it lasted more than a day of usage, of normal usage and that to me is pretty insane for a phone that's you know relatively small and has a pretty small battery pack in comparison to some of its competitors which are larger and have either a slightly larger battery pack. So what I'm trying to say over here is that Google have done extremely well in terms of optimizing that battery and of course if you use that adaptive battery mode through the settings then the phone will kind of learn your usage patterns and optimize your battery for that uh, purpose. And now we get 
on to camera performance. Now here, I've again got a dedicated video on camera performance where I get into a lot more detail about the camera. Now in terms of the raw specs, it's got a 12.2 12 megapixel main camera at f1.7 and the ultra wide is 16 megapixel at f2.2. The front facing camera is an 8 megapixel camera at f2.0, so worth bearing that all in mind. Now in terms of the uh, camera app itself, some questions that I did get is how quick does it respond? Well, I can safely say that it takes photos blisteringly quick, there's no processing time while you're taking photos. Although after you take a photo, there's a small amount of processing time after you've taken a photo in the gallery app, but that's not a big deal. The biggest lag, so to speak, that I noticed is when you take a panorama shot and it's stitching up the thing, it takes around two, two and a half seconds in total for it to, to stitch up. So something that takes a little bit of extra time, but truthfully in comparison to let's say other Samsung devices that I was testing at the time, it's pretty much on par and had no issues whatsoever in this respect. So Google have done a good job in comparison to some of its predecessors. Now app and processing aside, let's get on to the actual camera performance and here I compared it to the 4XL, the uh, 4A, the Galaxy S10 Plus, the Note 20 Ultra 5G, the Note 20 5G and the S10. 20 Ultra 5G, which all the, these flagship Samsung devices are fast, um, far more expensive devices. Here the Pixel 5 not only keeps up with these devices, but also kind of puts them to shame, specifically when it comes to landscape photography. The same could be said when it comes to taking selfie photos, the Pixel 5 does an extremely great job, and furthermore, even when it comes to macro shots, it preserves a good tonality throughout the, the range. Now the same could be said about its incredible low light performance. Not only if you enable flash, or for example, if you have night sight enabled, it's gonna provide you excellent photography. If you were to enable night sight, you can also enable this on uh, the portrait mode. So just bear that in mind as well. You can see a photo comparison over here uh, with my face, and you can see that it's extremely impressive. Now the thing that does let it down is twofold. First of all, in terms of its uh, zoom, it's only got seven times zoom at most, and here it's not as impressive as let's say the optical zoom provided in comparison to the Samsung flagships. While in comparison to its alternatives, for example the Pixel 4 XL or the Pixel 4a or the S10 Plus which made a meal of the zooming capabilities, the Pixel 5 is okay. Now there, uh, moving on from there, it's actually its ultra wide performance when it, specifically when it comes to low light uh, photography. No matter what mode you set it in, the low light performance with an ultra wide lens is not as good and nowhere to be compared in comparison to the Samsung flagship devices which are far superior in this domain and make the Pixel 5 look well somewhat cheap in comparison. What I'm trying to say on it over here on the whole is that the Pixel 5's camera is extremely impressive and something that you should definitely look into because it's very very good. Now the another thing that I was asked a lot is the fact that how does it perform when it comes to social media apps? Well when I use Messenger, WhatsApp and Instagram you could see the images for yourself aren't as sharp or as, um, as good and it comes across in terms of the overall image tone and in terms of the image performance and therefore it just doesn't look as good. So here again the Android device is very much like the Pixel 5 is still nowhere to be compared in comparison to the iPhone alternatives. Moving on from there we've got the video capabilities. Now here the Pixel 5 is limited to 4K 60fps in its rear shooter or it shoots up to 4K 60fps. You can also get slow-mo modes in 1080p so worth bearing that in mind and in terms of the front selfie camera it's limited to 1080p 30fps which was slightly disappointing. On the whole over here yet again just to keep it pretty brief is that the video capabilities are extremely extremely impressive. Among the best Pixel device uh, that's ever been made in terms of video capabilities and in comparison to flagship Android devices such as from Samsung, here the Pixel 5 not only competes but in certain respects actually beats them just because of the way it's processing it and the way it's doing it. So yet, it, yet again, despite its chipset being a little bit lackluster in comparison to some of the Samsung devices, the Pixel 5 performs extraordinarily well and must be applauded in this domain because not only in terms of stabilization but also in terms of overall video quality. The only thing again that I would point out is this ultra wide lens was just not that impressive. It looks quite grainy, kind of painted over and it really looks kind of like a cheap phone if you are uh, comparing it to these Samsung flagship devices which not are perfect in their ultra wide modes in terms of recording but in the grand scheme of things are still very impressive. Now the only thing I will say just to kind of conclude this video segment is that you've got a variety of different stabilization modes that you might want to consider. For example cinematic pan which is a new feature 
feature on the Pixel 5. It provides fantastic cinematic shots, which of course don't have audio or and are slowed down by two times, but on the whole looked great and are great for social media sharing. So some features that some people will definitely like and the fact that Google have integrated different modes of stabilization is pretty impressive to say the least. And this all leads me on to my verdict. What do I make about the Google Pixel 5? Well, if I was designing a phone for myself, I would have retained stereo front-facing speakers, as in physical speakers, that is. I would have left the 3.5mm jack, and furthermore, left an expandable storage slot for microSD slots, because this can be useful for people who are taking the phone on the go, specifically given the fact it's IPX8 rated now. Furthermore, I would have improved its ultra-wide capabilities. Other than that, the phone is pretty much perfect. And if you are someone who doesn't care about the things I've just mentioned, then this phone is arguably the best Android smartphone you can buy right now. Given its price in comparison to some of its competitors, it's actually pretty impressive. And as a result, gets my best buy award, which isn't an award I would easily fling out because it's, a, it's an award that I would only give to some of the phones or devices which are truly the cream of the crop. And in this respect, the Pixel 5 really is. Sure, it could be improved and some people will actually prefer prefer the 4a uh, 5g instead because it provides similar type of experience although uh, it's lackluster in certain domains but on the whole this phone is a fantastic device and one you should definitely consider now let me know in the comments below what you make of the google pixel 5 or indeed it's some of its alternatives specifically for example the 4a 5g or let's say the samsung alternatives i'd be very much intrigued to hear your thoughts and to see where your head is at if you like this video make sure you give it a like subscribe to see more independent unbiased um, honest reviews and favorite and share if you felt that this video will help a family or friend. All right, guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye bye.